Hi everyone. Um, I'm super excited to be talking with Ariel today about your unique background. You have such an interesting one. Tell me a little bit about what that background is. Well, for 24 years, I ran the Pasadena Film Commission and promoted all of Pasadena's properties to the film industry as a potential film location. So I really want to talk about film location rentals. And if you could rent your house for filming, wanted to get into that and kind of give some tips. Yeah, this is so interesting because, you know, I'm a big Friends uh, fan, you know, the show Friends. Oh, wonderful. And I know yeah. that they built a set and it's not a real apartment that they're shooting out of. And I just thought in my brain, like, maybe that's what they producers use mostly are the, these built sets, but that's not true. So I love that this is what you do. You help people bring in extra money by using their home as a film location. And, you know, how does one even know that their home could be used to rent it out for, for filming? Property owners have been asking me all the time, how do I get my house in the movies? So I ended up getting my real estate license and I'm now working on the end where I'm helping property owners. And everybody's wondering about that. Like, is this even possible? And I can say if you're in the LA area or what they call the TMZ, the 30 mile zone, oh. that is the zone that's considered to be the film industry. And it's literally a physical radius from the Beverly Center in like West oh. Hollywood. Going out in a 30 mile radius is considered the uh the motion picture zone so oh, anybody who films there isn't that interesting anybody who who films in that area is in the industry zone uh, if you live in say new york chicago atlanta new orleans those are also production centers now they're very popular destinations for filmmakers if you want to promote your property in any of those areas and you know that there's filming going on you're in a good area that this could be a possibility for you. And if you get beyond the, those production centers and you really get outside some of these bigger cities, if you go to this one website, I really want to recommend this to people. It's called AFCI, AFCI.org. It's the Association of Film Commissioners International. Mm -hmm. And that organization has a huge membership of film commissioners from across the globe there may be a good chance that your city would be have its own commission, which is great because they have a member directory that anyone can look up and they can look up their city. And if there's a film commission there, chances are there's a, there's production in your town, which means this is a possibility for you because usually these commissions are funded by local government. They're funded by the convention bureau and they're not going to put that outlay of staff and and the marketing budgets and benefits to pay that staff if there wasn't real valid filming going on in that area. So that's a good way, that's a good test to find out if, if this is something as a property owner that you could do. Oh, what a great resource. I had no idea. This is like a, a whole new world that you're opening up to me, Ariel. Um, so it sounds like from from listening to you talk right now that there's so much that needs to come together for a property be, to be selected even as a film location. Can you uh, talk a little bit about that process? Yeah, actually there, there are quite a few things. Uh, a lot of folks think, well, I just listed my home. I should have filming immediately. Mm. But a few things need to really happen for it to be viable. First off, you need to be an exact match your property for that particular script that the filmmaker has. If they want a 1960s post and beam house, you better be exactly that. Mm -hmm. And there's the other challenge that the filmmakers are, are looking at. It, they prefer that your house possibly match two separate locations. They might have a scene where they want, they have a kitchen scene and then they want to do a backyard scene, but they want the backyard to be like it's at a different house. And if you oh. have a great backyard and you have a really great kitchen and they're slightly different and you can see that they're different, that's another thing. Because a lot of times they'll need to do one scene in the morning at one at one location, another scene in another. And if you have both, that's really good. And of course, it's also dependent on the owner's schedule. 
you know, oh, property even available. You know, they might, you might be picked on any given day and you have a lot of potential. You're the exact match, but hey, it might be you're having a wedding reception for your daughter. And then the final thing is you need to be in close proximity to another location because they'll be shooting maybe three different setups, meaning like I say, they'll have a kitchen scene, they'll have a backyard scene, and then they want a scene at a, a yogurt shop. So if it might be a great post and beam house, for instance, but if they have a yogurt shop scene that they need to film later in the day and there's no one near you or not anybody that's going to host filming that can nix you out so mm -hmm. quite a few elements need to come together amy this is so incredible what you do because you're not just a realtor in la but you're you're also someone who can provide you know passive income for people if their home meets certain criteria and and this is why i'm super excited to be talking to you this morning about it um, so we talked a little bit about the process, um, but what about the home? Like what makes a home a great film location? Well, first off, you need to have plenty of space. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that, any room that they would be filming in, one third of it needs to be able to be taken up by crew and equipment and still look like mm -hmm. a normal size room. Of course, now with new technology, crew sizes are getting smaller. But even with a smaller crew, you know, they can take up quite a bit of space. So I bet. yeah, you just have to plan that one third of the room is going to be crew and equipment. And given that, does it still look big enough? Does it look like a normal size living room? Does it, you know, look like a normal size deck? And another thing, it's kind of different for commercials versus TV and features with commercials. They're looking for like clean, neutral color palettes sort of a recognizable modern American design. Really open floor plan is great so they can get different angles and great light. It's the kind of you know commercials you see where you can tell that a consumer product wants to be associated with that location. You know, there's just great light. It just looks idyllic. But for TV series and movies, it's very, very different. Um, they need a variety of different properties from different time periods. They're looking for really interesting architectural details, elements mm -hmm. that guide the eye, give texture to the story. You know, anything that makes you feel that you're there and you're of that era is, is mm. very important. Um, what makes a property film friendly? Like logistically, I would say, first off, you're, you can't be on like a major highway. You need to have kind of a quiet street mm -hmm. so that they're able to get their sound takes. Um, having some available parking nearby, either on the street or on site. That's wonderful. If you have an mm -hmm. extra big driveway, if you're a commercial property, if you have a lot that could be used, that's wonderful. And then the final one that a lot of people don't think about, but it's critical. And I found that when I was running the film commission, that this is something I got involved with is neighborhood conflict. Are there amenable mm -hmm. neighbors? Some neighbors are really against filming and others don't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. But if they have a problem with it, they can create a lot of drama and, and issues. So, I'm sure. so folks, if you want to do this, really have a good relationship with your neighbors. Reach out to them if you're going to do filming. You know, knock on their door, maybe give them a little gift or maybe mm -hmm. you know, have a, a neighborhood host a neighborhood <laughs> barbecue. It really goes a long way. Yeah, th that's a great tip. I'm sure some neighbors are like really excited that their street might be filmed or just to even be able to talk about with their friends like, oh, the home next door across the street is <laughs> going to be in this mo movie. But other neighbors are like, they don't want to deal with the extra congestion or the noise and, and because it affects everybody around that particular film house. It really um, but does. Those are great tips. Thank you. And so Ariel, what is the average daily rental rate for filming? And folks, you're not going to want to miss this. This is incredible. Well, I would say if, if you have a residential property and you want to know what you could rent your property for, look up Zillow, look, go to Zillow, look up your monthly rent estimate, they call it. That's an indicator of what you could charge daily <clears throat> for a film day. That means when the whole crew is there filming. 
Wow. That's a really good guideline. Of course, some people have a tighter budget. They have a smaller crew. Their project might be web-based, that kind of thing. They're going to have a smaller budget, so you have to be flexible. But for more of a standard production rate, you know, TV, commercial, series, you know, features, I, I would look at that that daily rate, that daily's estimate. That's what you would charge. For a prep and strike day, a prep day is when they're bringing in, you know, the set dressing and their um, furniture, greens, et cetera. That would be a day where you would charge half that daily rate. Same with the strike day, which is when they remove all of their stuff and their equipment. So that's kind of a, you know, good, good rule of thumb is to check that out to see what your property would be worth in terms of a rental. Um, if you're a commercial property, it's slightly different. They have to be able to cover what you would lose in proceeds for a typical business day. Like if they're going to film on a Wednesday, you should look at what you typically make on a standard Wednesday. And okay. they would have to cover that because usually they end up filming 12 to 15 hours and they shut you down for the day. Or if it's a half day, look at what, what your half day proceeds would be. And if there are any personnel staff that you have that are sent home because they're in the way of the filming mm -hmm. and you have to cover their salaries, then the crew, the uh, production would have to look at that, possibly cover that. So some really good money can be made um, if your home is selected as a film location, incredible amount of passive income. And is this income, um, it, I understand it's tax free, is this true? Yeah, in many cases, you don't have to pay taxes on the rental income for the first 14 days wow. of filming rentals that you do. There's no state or federal tax, but you really need to consult with your CPA or tax attorney on this just to be sure, because you, <laughs> you know, folks may have other rentals that could affect this. Mm. You know, you might have an Airbnb rental, you mm -hmm. might have another second property that you rent out. So that could affect things. But if you're not doing any rentals at all, and you're just doing filming and you do say 14 days of filming at 10,000 a day, that's like 140,000 in tax-free income. That's <laughs> amazing. What preparation uh, do you need to let filmmakers know about your property? Well, first off, you need photos. You should take a, a whole set of photos of your property. Um, you can take it with your iPhone. There's no problem with that. That's fine. The iPhones or or Android, whatever kind of phone you have, all of the phones now take pretty amazing pictures. And you want to get pictures of both the interiors and the exteriors of your property using the widest angle possible. The filmmakers really need to see all three walls in any given picture. Yeah. And you also need to do a reverse shot so they can see the room, what the room looks like from the opposite side of the room. And you might experiment a bit with raising or lowering the level of how you have your camera because mm -hmm. the room can look different based on how you move it. A lot of people shoot things just straight on, but if yeah. you move the angle a bit, it can look kind of grand. If you lower it, you know, uh, it makes you feel like you're really in the scene. You feel you're closer to the textures of tables and drapery and everything. So that's that's mm. really important to like look at how you can sh creatively shoot it. I usually shoot from corner to corner in the room. Like I go to one corner and then I go to the caddy mm. corner and shoot the opposite direction. And again, all three walls. And what do folks do with these photos once they take them? Well, you know, you could send them to your local film commission. Uh, many of them maintain libraries of locations. Hi there, that uh, filmmakers <laughs> search. Or you can work with the service like mine, uh, filmlocationproperties.com. I'm based in LA though, but we help promote properties and coordinate filming. And uh, I'm able to help them in that regard. I'm a licensed real estate agent and that's required in order to be able to promote and to help manage filming rentals here in California. So folks can you know, send me that you send me your photos if you're in the LA area and I can evaluate your property and see if it's one I'd be able to promote to filmmakers, that it works logistically. You know, just send it to Ariel Penn, that's A-R-I-E-L-P-E-N-N -N at gmail.com. And I'll let you know if it works for filming. 
I'll get in touch with you and we could start promoting your property. I, I just want folks to know though that I work on a commission basis only. So there's no upfront fees. I only wow. get paid if you get the job. And that's it. If you're out of the LA area, you know, check back to this video in the description down below. I'll probably have a list of resources. This is good stuff. Thanks. So <laughs> what do you do to help promote your clients' properties? You, you kind of touched on it a little bit. Can you go into more detail? After I look at folks' photos and I think it would work, work logistically, I would come to the property myself and take my own set of photos. And I would put them up on our website that the scouts look at, all the film location scouts. My website, again, filmlocationproperties.com. And I'd also be putting it up on social media. I'm doing also right now regular digital location catalogs where I just put all of my locations in a catalog and send it out or have a, a Dropbox link to all the location scouts and managers. Mm -hmm. If I sign a new property, uh, I'm going to be doing regular location alerts to let, to let the industry know that your property is now available. There's another thing. I also have like scout calls that, you know, lo location scouts call me saying they're looking for something specifically. So if I can make a match among my properties, oh, that's, that's great. the best of all worlds. And I'm hoping like towards the end of the year or like maybe once a year to do an actual print catalog that scouts right. can have with them when they're out scouting in their car. They don't have to fuss with their iPad or their phone. They'll just have a catalog they can take with them. Oh, wow. That that would be amazing. That sounds like a lot of work, though, but really cool. What you, you know, it's a, a cool job that you have. Uh, how do you help when a production is interested in a property? Well, yeah, that's a good question, because that's one thing the owners ask me. Well, what are you going to do for me? Like you're I know you're promoting my property, but mm -hmm. once it's selected, what goes on? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I usually do is there's at least three showings that needs to occur of a property like before anything is ever booked by a production company first off they usually send out a location scout or a location manager you know they're the ones that actually like they they look around they're they're responsible for trying to find the right match so they'll come out if they've seen photos or they've gone to my website or they've gotten a location alert and they think it'll work for a particular scene in their script they're going to be contacting me to be able to come see your property. So they'll come first, they'll take their own set of photos. They're gonna show it to the director and the production designer. And if they like it, they're gonna to wanna to come out with the scout or manager and see your nice. property. And if they like it, then there's gonna be a, at least a final scout called the tech scout, where the department heads for each, each department on the crew comes and looks at the property and makes sure that it works logistically for them. And, and at that point, they're probably going to film. They're most likely mm -hmm. going to film, uh, but they have to figure out like, where do they run the electrical wires? Where can they put the lights? So that's called mm -hmm. the tech scout. Another thing I end up doing is I end up negotiating the contracts on behalf of my clients. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of them are not familiar with the production contracts and I make sure that they get paid. I also keep track of scheduling and any production issues that come up. Also, insurance is a biggie. You know, I need to wow. make sure that the company insurance, you know how important insurance is. Yes. That they have general liability and that they have workers comp. And then I have to contact the companies, the insurance companies to make sure that the that the uh, policies are enforced and that they're covering what they say they cover. Mm. And then also that there's some kind of damage deposit. If that, you know, oh. they're going to be there and they're bringing in some heavy equipment, you know, oh. it's not like, not like a smaller crew where maybe they're shooting a film with their iPhone. I'm not as worried about that, but if it's a big crew, making sure the owner has a, dep a deposit in hand to take care of any um, damages that may occur, like smaller things that they can cash it and take care of it right away and oh. don't have to file an insurance claim. And then I I'll help find an experienced site rep who will be on site looking out for the owner's interest the entire time that the film production is there, including prep and strike days. They would get a list 
from me of what the owner's restrictions are. If they have yeah. any restrictions, like you can't be in this part of the house or you can't use that room, et cetera. Um, you know, part of that is doing like pre and post inspections. Like before the crew ever arrives, I have the site rep do an inspection of the property, document the condition with photos and video. And then when the crew leaves, they do a post inspection. So there's no conflict with the company over what happened. If you know something fell or something was damaged, there's evidence of that, you know, for both sides. It protects both the filmmakers and the property owner. Also, I'm available 24-7 if there are any schedule changes or production issues that come up because they film at all hours of the day and night and I have to be wow. available as well. Wow. To questions and then liaison with the owner around any changes that might need to occur. Wow, it sounds like um, when you have a location that's being filmed, you're going to be very busy, but you, you sound very committed and, you know. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yes, I uh, am. want to work hard for my clients. You do. Ariel, do the property owners remain on site while the filmmakers are there? Usually not. I know everybody thinks, oh, they're probably, you know, the owners are probably not on site because of COVID and all of that. But even pre-pandemic days, because the crew, you know, they bring in a lot of people, they bring in a lot of equipment. It's hard as a homeowner to do your normal activities in your home while you have a crew there. Yeah. And COVID, especially where everybody's trying to keep everything COVID safe. The, a lot of filmmakers would prefer that the family be off site, and mm. in that case, they they pay for a hotel. They pay oh. for you know to have them off site, you know, at a hotel of their choice. So I help as well coordinate that and communicate that to the owner and and back to the company where they'd like to stay. Oh wow, that's so nice. So they, it's like an all expense paid little vacation while you're. <laughs> Getting money for the your home to be used as a film location. That's that's amazing. So, what are production dates like? Well, you know, if they're going to be a film a full day at your property, it's usually twelve to fifteen hours from oh, the wow. time they pull in to the time they pull out. So, it's a very full day. Mm -hmm. um, it, and the crew, it could bring anywhere from ten to seventy five people on site, oh. and be at least a few larger trucks for a standard shoot as well as transport vans you know to get the crew to the site mm -hmm. but the um you know in terms they don't bring the whole crew they usually base camp off site at a large okay. lot and they kind of bring essential equipment that makes it the, the impact on the street a lot nicer you know oh i bet we don't have everything there it's just uh, just essential pieces usually that's very considerate you know it that's really is the industry works hard to make it nice for folks, you know, so the neighbors are not too impacted. That's good to know. So what if folks, um, what if they want to buy a property that would be good for filming or if they have a property that's hosted filming and that they want a realtor to sell it, a realtor like you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm here for that. I have like real estate investors that are friends that I've met through luncheons and different networking events where they're looking for a property that can not only be their home or be a second home, but it can make some rental income. If you have a property that's hosted filming, I know how to promote that as a value add to your buyers. Now I would write up what, you know, and research the film history of your property and have that available to the buyers and, and talk to them with, some experience about what that would be like and what the potential income could be and the tax wow. issues and all of that. Wow. I, I bet that home will sell for a lot more and a lot faster if it's a film location property. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. Oh, and I also meant to mention folks that, you know, in terms of looking for a film location property to buy, you can talk to Amy about getting pre-approved for a loan if if you're looking and you this is something you want to do and something you want to explore. So that's something to consider and and I'm happy to take you out to to look at property that might work for you. Ariel, thank you so much for your time today. This has been Absolutely. great information. If you have any other questions about filming rentals, please put them down in the comments below and we promise we will follow up with you. 
Or if you've hosted filming and have some tips for other owners, please share. We want to know.